Hey y'all, it's your Anita and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about two products. I'm going to be reviewing or trying out and reviewing the Morphe 3502 as well as the Too Faced 3-in-1 Hangover Primer Replenishing and Setting Spray. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray. I'm not wrong with me. Um, I have tried the Too Faced Hangover Cream primer and I really like it a lot that is one of my favorite face primers um but I typically really love like spray primers on my face um more so than cream primers so if this is you know good I'm gonna be working that into my routine so my eyebrows are already on um because I always do them off camera if you'd like to see how I do my eyebrows I did a I kind of shaped them a little differently today like this one's way more straight than it typically that usually is I don't know if I really like it yet I'm just kind of trying new things to see what happens. But anyways, um, if you want to see an eyebrow tutorial, really beginner friendly one, go ahead and uh, it'll be linked at the end of this video. It'll come up as an annotation or whatever. But yeah, but like two videos back is an eyebrow tutorial. It wasn't that long ago, it was like a week ago or something like that. So yeah, so I'm going to start off with the 3-in-1 um, Hangover Primer. It has, says it has coconut water, it's probiotic based ingredient and skin revivers. So it's to prime, set, and refresh. So I, you can use this to prime your makeup before you put on your makeup. Um, prime your makeup before you put on your makeup. You can use this to prime your face before you put on your makeup. And you can also use it to set your face after you put on your makeup as well as you can use it to refresh your face throughout the day. This is a big bottle. So um, I don't know if I'm going to be putting this in my purse to carry with me during the day as like a little refresher um I, but i'm sure they probably make a travel size one i didn't see the travel size one when i went to ulta to buy this um if they do have a travel size one i suggest getting it i have a travel size of the well i have the yeah the small size of the mario badescu facial spray which is my favorite to refresh my makeup that shit makes you look like your makeup you just put that ish on like right there um and i also love the tart um what is it like something of the sea or whatever it's that tart marine boosting spray that is bomb i love that i usually use that to um prime my face before i usually use it in conjunction with my smashbox um primer water but i will be using only this today so i'm just going to i haven't missed this just as yet so i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna just spray a little bit make sure Ooh, it smells like coconuts Ooh. <laughs> Just I wanted to spray a little bit to get that like initial mist out of the way. My floor is probably a little wet now. Um, the mist on this is actually nice because spraying it that two times, I was like, oh, this usually when you first spray these, it's like it's all cloggy and weird. But the mist on this is nice, so I'm just gonna spray my face. <laughs> oh, I should have held that a little further away from my face because those mists, those little goblets, little droplets were a little heavy. And I'm just gonna use a beauty blender and we're just gonna pat this in. <laughs> I have nothing else on my face other than some um, moisturizer that I, my Oil of Olay moisturizer that I always use to moisturize my face. And I also use some um, Organics Botanics Australia um, moisturizing, like coconut water with lavender mist. I found that at um, TJ Maxx. I have not been able to find that online, like on the website. The products they do have are like really, really expensive and it's not the one that I'm using. So I don't, I don't know. You guys might just have to cycle through your TJ Maxx, local TJ Maxx until you find it. But um, I love that spray. It's part of my nighttime routine, um, my nighttime skin routine where I use it and whatnot. So, okay. Um, preliminary thoughts on this spray. Great mist. Um, it feels good on the skin. It actually dries pretty quickly. Um, I just like using my beauty blender to pat it in just to... I don't know. I just like it. <laughs> I feel like my skin absorbs it better. But um, it feels good. Uh, it claims as... Um, wow, I'm on the wrong side. So it claims that it makes your makeup 100% smoother, 100% more hy looked more hydrate hydrated, and it's 100% transfer proof. And people, apparently, it's uh, it'll make your look 100% more flawless because Too Faced likes to include little 
like statistics on their packaging. I don't know if you guys can see that because my light. But yeah, they like to, <laughs> which I think is cute. Like the packaging is cute. I really love like Too Faced's like packaging for their products. I really think it's cute. Um, it smells great. So if anything, it's going to smell amazing. So let's see. Let me prime my eyes. I'm going to do um, eyes first before um, face. Face. I always do my eyes first before face. I'm just using some concealer to prime my eyes because I forgot to grab my eyeshadow, like, actual primer. But who the hell uses, eye who uses an eyeshadow primer these days? Like, let's be honest here. Everybody I see on YouTube and everywhere else uses concealers to prime their eyes. Like, I barely see anybody ever using an eyeshadow, like, primer to, like, actually prime their eyes. And I'm using the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I like this concealer for the face, but, um... I don't know I just the shade I got as an under eye oh and I'm blending this out with my makeup shack t42 um I bought it to use under the eyes but I don't know it just didn't it just didn't do it for me like I just felt like my under eye was a little too bright and I typically like a really natural looking under eye so it just didn't work for me but I do use it sometimes to help brighten up my under eye when I use a more natural concealer under there so um, I have found a good purpose for it, and I use it to prime my eyes. <laughs> so I have found a good purpose for it. I just didn't like it standalone under the under eye. Um, formula wise, felt great under the eye. I will say that. As much as I didn't like it as just standalone under the eye for its color purposes, the formula is amazing. So, and it's really cheap. It's like six bucks. So if you're looking for a concealer to for under eye, or you know, if you like the shade that uh, I got, this one is in the shade. Um, Oh crap. <laughs> Tan 50. I think I sh would go a shade down because since I do like a more natural under eye. But if you want something more brightening, then definitely look at that and look at the shade that you like. So I'm just patting that out with a beauty blender just to blend it out um, to make sure I didn't get any skips or anything. Alright, and then I like to, I always like to set my eyes before I do go into the shadow of any type. So I'm just going to take this NYX HD um, finishing powder. And I'm just going to go in and set my eyes. Just dust a little of that on there. This also helps my shadows go on smoother. Sometimes I set with the no color powder, but that's, it's up to you. Whatever your preference, whatever... HD, whichever, whatever finishing powder you have, um, translucent finishing powder works fine. So, all right, let's move on to Morphe. So, I have the 350M, yeah, I have the 350M, <laughs> which is the 350 matte palette. Um, first, let's first thing first, let's see this packaging. I've already opened this and taken the bubble wrap and all that off of this, but, um, let's look at this packaging. I wish I still had one of my other Morphe boxes. But Morphe, excuse me, this packaging is pretty. I like it. Very sleek. Um, it feels good too. It doesn't feel really cheap. Um, yeah, I just I like this a lot. I love I love how sleek this looks. I, I really love this. I love the font that they're using for this. And that's just a box. Like, can we talk about like excuse me, Morphe? This is new. I like this. It looks like they're um they're just it looks like they're just updating their brand and I like it a lot. I love it. It's still the same plastic um casing. It doesn't really feel much different from the one that always comes in, but I do like the new um I do like the new printing on here. I do like it. But it feels it's like it has a texture it's textured and it's kind of raised a little bit so I have a funny feeling that like if you were to like kind of really carry this palette around and get some wear and tear on it I feel like this might scratch off I'm not positive I'm not going to scratch it off because it what so yeah but I just it feels like that might be something that might happen but it's not really a big deal no is it no it's not um, this palette retailed for $23 with a coupon code of your choice from every youtuber that has a coupon code because everybody has a morphe code um 10 off so it was initially like after shipping it was initially like 30 something dollars and then once i applied the coupon code i paid 28 dollars for the palette and shipping so yeah morphe definitely uh definitely still doing it right <laughs> um this one comes this is a lot different from i've swatched these already and this is a lot different from the other palettes this one has a sheet in it 
that tells you the name of the shades. Um, the Jaclyn Hill palette came with a card that gave you the shade names. I like that this came with this little sheet. I'm definitely going to figure out a way if I can like tape this to the top up here or something. Um, I kind of wish it was printed on the palette, but Morphe does do private labeling, so I could see why they don't print it on the actual palette because it is not Morphe who is, you know, in their factory that is making this palette. So yeah, but even though they are private labeling, a lot of a lot of brands are private labeled. Fenty Beauty is private labeled. Marc Jacobs is private labeled. Um, there's a lot of brands out there that do private label. It's okay. Like for me, it's not a big idea, big deal. If for you it's a big deal, then by all means, don't buy from the brand. <laughs> um, but these, after swatching them, when I first opened the box, I got this. I ordered it on launch day on the 12th, and I received it earlier this past week. Today, Sunday, when I'm filming this. So I received it around Wednesday of the following week of the launch. So the shipping was actually really fast. I really love when the shipping is fast, and I got standard shipping. I didn't get expedited ship or any, shipping or anything like that. Um, it had looked like the palette sold out within 30 minutes. I was able to get in and out of the site really quickly I actually like at 10:59 was able to put this in my cart and buy it so I was like cool awesome but um yeah I checked back the site around a lot around because for them it for them it launches like 8 a.m pacific time or like something like that and I'm eastern time so it was like 11 o'clock my time so yeah 10:59 is when I came went online but um yeah, I was able to get this really easily. Checkout was fine, no problem. When I checked back around 30 minutes later, the palette was still there, so they hadn't sold out very quickly. I had assumed that it's because, you know, when people heard about this palette, I saw a lot of people saying that basically they didn't want it, like it wasn't necessary, because it's like, oh, it's another fall palette. But I really love these shades in here. I think they're very pretty. I love all the oranges. I love the reds. There's a lot more deeper, there's a deeper red in here than there was in the 35-0. Um, I don't have the 35-0 with the shimmer in the mattes. I only have the all matte palette because at the time I only wanted an all matte palette. Um, this one, I was like, it looks, <laughs> I was like, uh, this is the sister of what I have already. So I was like really torn whether or not I wanted it. But I bit the bullet and said, yeah, sure, I'll buy it. But um, yeah, so after swatching, shadows feel definitely significantly different. I'm gonna um, live swatch a couple. Now, excuse me, my swatching is ass. So, <laughs> my swatching is ass. So let's see, I'm going to do, I have nothing on my fingers by the way. So I'm gonna do this red one here, which is the shade Fire. I'm going to also do this one on the end, which is the shade Ruby and so that's a matte and a shimmer so what the hell I'm gonna do another matte I'm gonna do this one over here which is the shade ablaze and ablaze is like super pretty like all of these shadows are very pretty so here's my arm there's one and two and three so ablaze swatches kind of patchy um, when I swatched it earlier in the week, it didn't look this patchy, but then again, I'm shitty at swatching. And matte shades don't always swatch the best, which is what I've learned over the years, is matte shades don't swatch the best on the arm, but they tend to look really nice on the eyes. This shade, which is ruby, swatch very pretty, and I feel like this is going to look great on the eyes. And fire swatch pretty nice, not as patchy as a blaze. And I feel like that one's going to look really nice on the eyes too. So I'm not disappointed. Um, the only shade in here that I had swatched earlier in the week that I was disappointed in was the black shade, which is Wiz. But anytime I see a black shade in a palette, I automatically think it's going to be bleh because black shades are kind of hard for people to get. So yeah, um, I'm going to stop running my mouth and I'm going to put these on the lid and yeah, I'll come back with my final thoughts on everything, all of this. <laughs> and after I get this on the lid, I'm going to do my whole face off camera and then I'm going to come back on camera and spray this to uh, let you guys know how I feel. So yeah, I will be back.
decided to throw on some lipstick and some lip liner. I'm using MAC Chestnut Lip Liner and NYX Suede Lipstick in the shade Soft Spoken. Just something nude because with everything that's going on on the eyes, I didn't want to do a bunch of stuff on the lip. So I'm going to talk about the setting, spray spray. the setting spray first. I like it a lot. I like it as a primer. It made my skin feel very hydrated. My makeup went on very smooth without a problem. I put it on from when I first started putting on my, my eye makeup and I just sprayed a little bit more on my face right before I did my face makeup and just kind of patted it in with a beauty blender. I felt like, I feel like when you do, when you kind of like pat the, you know, mist in with a beauty blender, it just kind of helps it soak in your skin and it just helps create an even, you know, flawless base for you. So I do feel like this is a great base. It's a great primer. As a setting spray, I really like it i initially set my face and then tried to see if it would do the you know do a transfer test because this says that it's supposed to be transfer proof or it's on the box it says um a hundred percent said um makeup didn't transfer so i sprayed it and then i tried patting my face with a paper towel and i did transfer a little bit onto the paper towel not a ton a lot less than if i had just used my any other setting spray I sprayed my face again just to see if maybe 
it would help it not transfer more and still about the same amount of transfer you know it wasn't too much transfer but it still did transfer you know it's it's not gonna be like the end of the world transfer but it is still some transferring so you know it is what it is but um my makeup does feel super flawless um I just my face doesn't feel powdery and I kind of want a little ham with powder today so yeah my face feels like really smooth my makeup just feels like it just settled really nicely I'm even seeing a little less creasing in some places like around my mouth and whatever since spraying it again um but yeah I like it a lot um definitely if you want to spend that $30 definitely check it out it is worth it um if they have a travel size one of these for cheaper I definitely suggest buying that I have a ton of setting sprays and upon buying the like big one I'm sitting here like I should have got a travel size <laughs> but I'm gonna I like it I'm gonna keep using it and let y'all know I'm gonna see if I can do a wear test coming in like a week or two to actually like try it and wear it and be out and about and whatnot because right now it's like 10 o'clock at night and I'm basically going to have this on maybe watch some basketball with my boyfriend and then go to bed <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna see if I can do like an actual wear test for you guys to let you know like if it lasts a lot longer than you know any other setting spray and whatnot but this is just a preliminary like little like review that I want to do since I bought it and for right now I really like it a lot um I when I like really sprayed a lot of it on my face I thought it was going to make my makeup look less matte but it didn't um it does give your makeup a little more of a more natural finish which is fine by me because I typically like a more natural finish on my makeup anyway so I give this two but thumbs up if you are not trying to spend thirty dollars on setting spray by all means don't one don't two there are plenty of other setting sprays on the market right now probably more setting sprays coming out in the very near future that you can definitely give your coin to that is cheaper yes if you guys want to, for me to do like a setting spray collection because I have gathered a lot of them at this point um, between drugstore and high-end let me know and I'll be happy to do that for y'all so anyways on to the palette so for the palette I had I had a minor issue but that was more so me than the palette and it was really I just sat down and I saw three colors three four colors that I really wanted to work with and then I guess upon the execution it just didn't come out right so this is the second attempt using this palette um so I used for this look I used the shades fire I used the shade Orb as a transition shade. It's a very nice transition shade. I like it a lot. It's like this weird kind of like soft brownish tan color, but I really like it. it. It went on the lid very nicely. All of these shadows went on the lid beautifully. They blended beautifully. They're super soft. The only shadow I kind of had some fallout trouble with because it's so soft is the shade Fire, but it didn't stain. I was able to just wipe off the fallout with uh, makeup wipe and no problem. Um, I thought Fire would stain on the lid and I was glad I messed up the first time around because I then had to take off everything that was on my eye and this did not stain. And I'm happy because a lot of red eyeshadows tend to stain your lids and I was happy that didn't stain. Um, I used the shade in the zone as well as I did use Wiz and a blaze. Um, I used Wiz and remember I said earlier in the video that when I swatched Wiz it was kind of patchy. It wasn't the blackest black, which I wasn't expecting it to be that, you know, it kind of is what it is. But when you apply it like on the lash line with a densely packed brush, like an eyeliner, not an eyeliner, like an eyebrow brush perfect absolutely perfect great color payoff i was very happy with that um trying to use it in like the crease or something that's when things get a little weird but um it's definitely workable it's not the worst black eyeshadow i've ever seen but it's definitely not the best so you know kind of is what it is pick your poison um the shade rustic i will say to get the highest color payoff out of these shimmer shadows use your finger or wet your brush um, which isn't bad. That's typically how shimmer shadows are anyway. But I thought from looking at this palette, from swatching it, I thought I would have got a better color payoff without having to wet my brush. But it didn't work out that way. It wasn't horrible. Like going in and then going in with the brush dry wasn't the worst. But it's just 
better if you wet the brush you know it's just you get a better color payoff and on the center i have that on the center of my lid i have rustic on the center of my lid and it's it's nice it's definitely more orange on the lid or maybe it is rust color i don't know it's it like for me it looks orange but you know <laughs> But it's nice. Other than that, I, I really do like this palette. These shadows are soft. They feel so much different from the previous palettes. And I have several Morphe palettes. You know, like I, I'm, I'm used to working with Morphe shadows. And I like it. I like this a lot. This is different. These kind of make me think of the Jaclyn Hill palette eyeshadows. Those ones are maybe like a tad bit softer. But this is definitely definitely a step up and a step in the right direction like Morphe said they came to slay and they're not playing any games and with this palette it's for sure so if you have the 35O I wouldn't suggest buying this mostly because it's so similar you know what I mean like unless you're gonna give your 35O away if you give your 35O away and you decide to buy this then by all means but it kind of doesn't make any sense for you to have the two palettes because yeah and then if you have the 35 om like i do i could see you wanting to get this because that was one of the reasons why i wanted to get it because i liked that this had matte and shimmers versus the 35 om is only mattes so i think this is a great sister palette to those duos i really like that i think this is a great sister palette i think this is a great standalone palette if you don't have the 35 o or the 35 om it's a great standalone palette to have. If you love oranges and reds, then this is for you. If you, this screams fall, by the way, this screams fall, and even summer too. This screams fall and summer for me as well, especially with these red shades. Um, but yeah, I really love the palette a lot. I think it's worth it. And for $23 plus a 10% a off discount code that you can use in store and online, I mean, can you really lose? Like, is it really? Is it that bad? I mean, it's not like you're paying $60 for only shimmer shades. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> it's $23. Morphe's definitely looking out for your pockets. So, yeah. But that is about it. That, those are my final thoughts. I'm also probably going to do a wear test on this, too, to see how it wears on the eyes after a long day. I have wear tested some other Morphe palettes just for myself to make sure I didn't waste my money. Um, and Morphe palettes for me typically last on the eyes all day without a problem, even just using a primer, not a primer, but, uh, using a concealer as a primer. So, yeah, I like it a lot. I think I'll be reaching for this palette quite a bit throughout the fall. Um, I don't wear makeup every day, so it's typically for tutorials and stuff. So you guys will probably see me doing some more of these, like, tutorials with this palette and even the 35OM palette, um, throughout the fall season. So yeah, and that's about it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the description box to links to everything in this video that I used or that I mainly talked about, which is the setting spray and the Morphe 3502. I believe it is still on their website. I don't think it's sold out. So yeah. Also, click the description box to check out the little links to my other social medias. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and you can follow me on Snapchat. So, yeah. But, um, thanks, guys. I will see you on my next one. Bye.